Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about one more esophageal disorder and that's called as a achalasia cardia. Okay, so let me write here. Achalasia cardia. So what exactly is the problem with the achalasia cardia? What's happening here is the contractions in the esophagus is not happening. Okay, so loss of contractions in esophagus. So that is the number one problem and not only that loss of relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. There is a lower esophageal sphincter right that is present between the esophagus as well as the, the stomach. The lower esophageal sphincter it is not relaxing it is tightly contracted okay it is tightly contracted like this. So now do you think whenever I take food imagine that I am the person who is having the achalasia cardia if I take food or water. Do you think it will go down the esophagus? First of all, they are not even going down the esophagus properly. Why? Why? Because even to pass the water, there should be contractions. Now, contractions are not there. So, it's very difficult for the passage of the foot through the esophagus. And even down near the lower esophagus, esophageal sphincter, there is tight contraction. So, the food is not passing from the esophagus into the stomach. So the patient will have what? The patient will have dysphagia. Okay, that is the main problem with achalasia cardia. Okay, so achalasia, no movements, no contractions in the esophagus. Okay, now important points is why there is a loss of relaxation. Okay, why there is loss of relaxation is because normally in the lower esophageal sphincter there are certain relaxing neurotransmitters are the inhibitory neurotransmitters. There are certain neurotransmitters which inhibit the contraction or which promotes the relaxation. So, these are neurotransmitters, let me write here, which are called as the VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, see VIP as well as the nitric oxide. See, these are neurotransmitters, they are gone, okay, lost. Now, due to loss of this inhibitory neurotransmitter, due to the loss of this inhibitory neurotransmitters, there is a failure in the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, okay, that is the main problem. Now, MCQs, this achalasia cardia, it is going to be seen in males or females. It's seen in both, but females are going to be most commonly affected. So, seen in young females, okay, seen in young females. What is the most common problem? The most common co symptom is going to be dysphagia. The word, the classical word, the word they will use is progressive dysphagia. Progressive dysphagia. What does I mean by progressive dysphagia? Progressive dysphagia means initially, okay, initially this female is having difficulty in swallowing the solid foods. Later on, now even for her to swallow the liquid foods is getting difficult. So there is a progressive dysphagia for liquids as well as solids, okay. So, initially difficulty, initial difficulty for solids, later on even liquids will have the difficulty to swallow. But most important, more difficulty for what? It is more difficult for this female to swallow the liquids. Okay, so there is dysphagia, again I am writing, there is dysphagia, more for liquids, at least solids, because of the gravity they will go down, they will gravitate down, liquids will have more dysphagia, she is feeling more difficulty to swallow the liquids, okay, so that is the problem, loss of the contraction of the esophagus, loss of relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, why loss of relaxation? Because the relaxing neurotransmitters, this inhibitory neurotransmitters of the muscle contraction, that's the nitric oxide as well as the vasoactive intestinal peptide, they are gone. Okay, these neurotransmitters are not there. It's going to be seen in young female. The patient is going to have progressive dysphagia. The dysphagia which is there initially for the solids, later on the dysphagia have extended to the liquids also. But more dysphagia is seen for the liquids. Now, what are the important points which you need to know? See, whenever you do a barium swallow, okay, if you ask this person to take the barium swallow, even we have discussed the barium swallow in the pharyngeal pouch, the Zenkers diverticulum, there will be a pouch which we have seen. Now, look here, this female patient, now she is having a barium swallow, 
what you can appreciate is see this is the area of the lower esophageal sphincter which is tightly contracted so this barium this barium material it is not going down into the stomach why because the lower esophageal sphincter is tightly contracted okay so because of that the esophagus now in order to accumulate all this barium now it is getting like you know just swollen like this so the esophagus it is getting dilated okay like this so this classically gives an appearance called as a bird beak appearance okay esophagus it's getting dilated like this and here the lower esophageal sphincter is tight tightly contracted now it is giving what let me write here the barium swallow point number five barium swallow is going to show bird beak sign and it's also called okay some of the books they will also mention it's called as a rat tail rat tail appearance so why it's called as a rat tail appearance is because like you know some amount of the barium it will leak see now from here from this area some amount of the barium it will leak down giving like a tail appearance this is called as a rat tail appearance so bird beak appearance is going to be seen true in achalasia cardia and rat tail appearance is also seen in achalasia cardia on barium swallow now whenever you do something called as manometry esophageal high resolution manometry that's going to be best okay almost considered as a gold standard now you look here the study which was performed over here is called as a high resolution manometry okay hrm now in high resolution manometry in a normal individual this is something normal in a normal individual you can see there are contractions in the esophagus okay the contractions are there in the esophagus while you take the food but in achalasia cardia there are different types of achalasia cardia which you will study in your surgery okay now in achalasia cardia see high resolution esophageal manometry you cannot see any contractions the contractions are not being recorded okay so the high resolution manometry is almost considered as a gold standard okay so this is the important thing now after this associations achalasia cardia it is associated with seventh important point associations it is associated with achalasia cardia it is associated with a disease called as chagas disease okay there is a disease called as a chagas disease now this individual who is developing this chagas disease like you know which is because of uh, trypanosoma cruzi now they will develop achalasia cardia not only that even diabetes mellitus uh, amyloidosis okay so amyloidosis diabetes mellitus patients and chagas disease and a sarcoidosis can be associated means those individuals who are having these diseases a chagas disease diabetes mellitus achalasia uh, sorry amyloidosis sarcoidosis they will might they might develop the achalasia cardia these are the associations and what else it is risk complication the problem with this achalasia cardia is some of the individuals who are having the achalasia cardia they might develop okay they might develop esophageal squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus okay squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus and what is the most common site of the squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus it is the lower sorry middle one third okay see the most common site the most common site of the squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus is going to be the middle one third this is the question which was uh, many times asked in india what is the most common site of the squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus middle one third okay but if they ask you something like what is the most common site of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus adenocarcinoma of the esophagus it is lower one third now here look the question i am changing a little what is the most common site of squamous cell carcinoma middle one third okay in india middle one third 
but the squamous cell carcinoma that is arising in the background of achalasia cardia then the answer will be lower one third okay so achalasia cardia leading to esophageal cancer the most common site is going to be lower one third but generally speaking the most common site of esophageal carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma the esophagus is a middle one third okay done completed now what the treatment Okay, what are the treatment options? The treatment options, whatever are available, are going to be Heller's. There is something called as Heller's myotomy. It's a surgical procedure. Surgery is going to be Heller's myotomy. Means myo means muscle to cut. So we are going to cut some fibers of the lower esophageal sphincter. That's called as the Heller's myotomy. And there are certain medical managements. What can be done? Are calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers. Why we are using calcium channel blockers is because of the lower esophageal sphincter. It's also a skeletal muscle, right? It's also uh, it's, sorry, it's not a skeletal muscle. It's also a muscle. Okay, the lower esophageal sphincter. It's also a muscle. So we need calcium for the muscular contraction. We need the muscle. Uh, sorry, we need the calcium for the contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter. So blocking the calcium will cause relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. So that's why we can use the calcium channel blockers, or we can use uh, botulin injections okay see intraspinctric intraspinctric injections okay intraspinctric injection of the botulin toxin why because we know botulin toxin will cause a paralysis botulin toxin it is going to affect the synaptobrevin like you know you, you know the things so botulin toxin usually causes the uh, it usually causes the paralysis of the muscles. So, injecting this botulin toxin into the lower esophageal sphincter also causes the paralysis of the lower esophageal sphincter or the simple relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. So, the problem will be treated. So, now one by one treatment. Surgical, it is Heller's myotomy to cut some muscle fibers. Heller's myotomy. Or we can use medical management like calcium channel blockers or we can also use intraspinctric injection of the botulin. High resolution manometry is gold standard. Also, we can go with the barium swallow. On barium swallow, what we are seeing is ractile appearance or bird beak appearance is going to be seen. Next, this achalasia cardia it is associated with Chagas disease, rabbit assimilitis, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis. Achalasia cardia is going to be seen males or females, young females, okay, young females with the main complaint of the progressive dysphagia, where dysphagia is more going to be for the liquids. Okay, initially dysphagia is for the solids, later for the liquids also, but more dysphagia is seen with the liquids. So with this, the topic of the ecclesia cardia is completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.